Hey guys, welcome back uh, to this particular playlist where we have been discussing about the different uh, interview questions which you can face um, related to Tosca. So let's move on to our next interview question. Uh, it's the second question in this particular list of questions. And here, uh, this question is about what are the major challenges uh, which you face while working with Tosca. And that could be also second part to this question, which could be uh, how do you solve these challenges uh, when you're working with Tosca? So this particular question is uh, quite common uh, in interviews and uh, you should prepare well for this question. Uh, you should at least mention five major challenges which you have faced and how did you overcome these challenges? Obviously, you can mention more than five, but uh, I would say at least five. This particular question will actually give the interviewer a fair idea of uh, where you are uh, with your Tosca knowledge in terms of the real-time knowledge, not only the theoretical part of it, but have you worked um, in a real-time project uh, with Tosca? Have you faced any challenges? And then um, how did you approach uh, towards resolving these challenges? So the approach uh, is more important uh, rather than just mentioning about the challenges, but what approach did you take to basically go around these obstacles? So that's what uh, the interviewer is looking for here. So structure your answer accordingly. I have mentioned um, around five challenges which uh, you can uh, pick up during your interview. Obviously, it's not mandatory. You can come up uh, with your own challenges which you have faced. But I thought of these five challenges, which are pretty common in any Tosca project. So starting with uh, object identification, which is uh, one of the most common challenges when you're working with Tosca. So all the Tosca is um, very effective in identifying objects across different technologies and applications. Sometimes uh, Tosca is even not able to uniquely identify an object or it's not able to identify that object because uh, it's built on some old technology. Now, in these kind of scenarios, uh, we have to fall back upon different identification mechanisms. We have to use the different scanning engines. Maybe uh, we have to fall back upon some of the scanning engines which are specific for uh, desktop-based uh, application or which are specific, uh, not specific to any particular technology. It uses some kind of uh, image-related um, identification like the UIA engine or uh, the uh, vision AI engine, right? So these kind of advanced AI engines where uh, you can use these engines to identify any particular um, application. It could be even a document or even it could be a VMware uh, machine as well, right? So we have to fall back upon these mechanisms uh, whenever we are not able to identify it with the regular ROSCA scan. Apart from this, uh, we also sometimes need to use the different configuration parameters, uh, which are part of the technical properties of a particular control. So if you're not able to identify the control with the default properties, we need to use additional properties. Uh, and that could be um, sometimes some additional configuration parameter, parameters, or it could be uh, steering parameters, or there are other parameters which can also be involved. So all of this uh, will help you to get around this particular obstacle, uh, which is to identify the controls uniquely in your application and then proceed with your automation. So the second challenge, uh, which uh, I want to mention is about the execution time. Now, in an agile world or in an agile environment, we have got very short um, release cycles. And in this release cycle, we not only have to execute our regression pack, uh, which could be hundreds of test cases. Uh, apart from this, we have to also automate uh, all the new functionality, which is going to be released. So considering the short amount of time and uh, the amount of test cases, which we have to execute every release, there is always a challenge to complete um, all of these executions within the specified amount of time, which is pretty short, right? So to come around this particular problem, uh, we have to fall back upon the distributed execution environment, which is provided by Tosca. So we have to make sure that um, our test cases are independent of each other. 
so that uh, if one test case fails, it doesn't have an impact on all the other executed test cases. Uh, and then we need to make uh, use of all the different uh, DEX agents, which are distributed execution agents, so that we can run our tests in parallel across uh, all these different agents at the same time. That will save us uh, some time and it will also speed up uh, the execution uh, for these hundreds of test cases. Also, we can um, integrate our uh, Tosca test cases with some CI CD tool like Jenkins so that uh, we can um, actually trigger this test cases automatically uh, during uh, night times um, to make use of the idle time period where nobody is working and we can continue with our execution and get the results um, in the morning when the team is back uh, and working. Right? So all these practices could be used uh, to save time and to speed up the execution so that we can finish all our test execution within the short release cycles. Another challenge which uh, is pretty uh, common is um, the high maintenance. Right. So whenever we are working with different Tosca projects um, and different teams working on the same projects, whenever some new team members come uh, into the team, uh, there are lots of test cases which will be added um, and then everybody could be working uh, in a different way. So that um, actually increases the maintenance efforts and time. So in order to uh, overcome this particular challenge, we need to make sure that um, everybody is following uh, the best practices across the team. Uh, everybody is taking care of uh, the framework components which are put together in Tosca. And um, everybody is trying to uh, reuse uh, whatever is already present and not um, creating new objects which are not required. That will bring down the maintenance efforts uh, in the long run. Also, uh, we can make use of the branching and merging concepts, uh, which is present in the Tosca workspace. So uh, what will happen is uh, we can have different branches where um, every team can work on their own branch or um, their own piece of uh, testing, which they are currently working on without affecting the main uh, workspace, right? So this way uh, we can reduce the maintenance uh, time and efforts uh, for the team. The next challenge, which uh, I want to discuss, is about the frequent failures uh, in Tosca. Now, if you are running your test cases locally or uh, in some distributed execution environment, uh, there are frequent failures of test cases, and there could be several reasons for that. Right? One of the reasons uh, could be that your test case is um, not efficient enough, which means uh, it's quite lengthy. It takes a lot of time or it could be related uh, to different changes in your application, or maybe the tests are not independent of each other. So one failure leads to other failures. Also, a lot of times you will have the situation where you have false positives, which means um, even though your test case has passed, uh, actually it has not passed uh, in terms of the validations or the actual test, which uh, it has to perform on the application. Now, these are pretty common. Uh, and the main reason behind this is you don't have enough uh, verifications or validations uh, added in your test cases. So to come around this particular problem, we need to make sure that all our test cases have got uh, proper verification points. So at every uh, test case, we have got at least uh, one verification or more than one verifications um, so that uh, we can check whether the expected result is uh, actually matching the actual result when we are running our tests. So that will take care of uh, the false positives. And then we can also make use of uh, the recovery and cleanup scenarios uh, for all our test case executions. So whenever we come across any unexpected error uh, event or any exception, we can handle that uh, within our test case rather than failing our complete test pack uh, we can um, either recover from that particular scenario or we can use a cleanup scenario uh, even if the recovery scenario fails. So we need to implement all of this uh, whenever we are um, building a test case so that um, it is quite consistent in terms of execution. Also, uh, we don't have any false positive. The last challenge uh, which I would like to mention is the performance issues. 
Now, this is a pretty common issue uh, when you are working with large enterprise teams uh, where uh, Tosca is being used by a lot of team members. Now, over time, what happens is the workspace keeps on growing. And then um, if the same workspace is being used across different teams, different projects, then the workspace size uh, becomes unmanageable. Now, this results in um, high maintenance as well as it results in performance issues where um, the Tosca users will have um, a low performance uh, because the workspace will slow down um, the execution as well as your test case creation time. Now to overcome this particular challenge, uh, there are lots of best practices which have been um, provided by Tricentus itself. So we need to make sure that uh, we have multiple workspaces um, across different teams. Uh, our workspace size is uh, not very big, like it could be around 5 GB uh, at maximum. And then uh, we can also use uh, slim workspaces for uh, different teams. So that uh, also improves the performance of the Tosca workspaces. Also, uh, we have to uh, make sure that we are compacting the workspaces regularly. And uh, also we can uh, have auto exclusion feature on so that uh, the objects which are not being used could be excluded from the workspace. So these are uh, the five real-time challenges which you will face uh, when uh, you are working uh, in a Tosca project. And this could be mentioned um, in this particular interview question. Obviously, there are a lot of other challenges. Um, as I said, don't just focus on uh, technical challenges, also focus on people and the team challenges. So how uh, everything affects the overall team and the projects, and then how uh, you can um, come up with a solution to overcome these challenges. So these are the important points to take care of uh, when you are trying to answer this particular question. So as always, thank you for listening to me. Um, and uh, if you have any feedback or comments, then please uh, do let me know. Uh, if you want me to look at any particular question related to Tosca or anything else, um, then feel free to uh, reach out to me. So I'll be uh, back soon uh, with another interesting interview question on Tosca and uh, see you until then.